welcome everyone back to from city to country and we are just taking an evening stroll in the garden the baby is asleep TK is currently going to pick something up and um, yeah, it's just me and Jeremiah here today in the garden at the moment. So we just wanted to show you a bit of the progress of the garden. I don't know where to start really. <laughs> this bed you already updated with this, this section. This arch is a new installment. Um, I believe, I don't think it was here in the last video. Um, I planted some hyacinth bean in there to grow up on this trellis. And I did the same there. And I've got some chamomile over there. We'll see how the chamomile is growing. It was looking very sad and sorry for itself when it went in but it's coming back pretty well over here is a strawberry patch um, earlier in today we picked our first strawberry and Jeremiah that being his favorite he had it <laughs> I had a little bit he shared with me it was very very sweet here is a new tomato bed that we installed yesterday evening um, this is all um, varieties that I've never grown before very different from the varieties we grew last year but yeah we put down weed fabric to suppress the weeds because we are battling weeds like bull thistles which has um, really sharp needles on their leaves so when you walk past it it you know connects and clings onto your your shoes your socks your clothes some of the needles do get in and manage to go pierce your skin sometimes so you have to be really careful so we're trying to suppress the weeds because they're very invasive and we want our plants to thrive here. So yeah, this one here is called an OV Romanian giant. So this is going to produce a very large fruit and it's said to grow really tall in height. We also have black crim, um, pink brandy wine, what else? Costolotto, Floriento, I think it is. <laughs> I don't know if I'm pronouncing it very well. What else do we have here? Um, Green Envy, Tigerella. What else? More pink brandy wines, Floridity, and Sweet Aperitif. And another pink brandy wine over there. Oh, another installment that we did as well is this row of giant Mongolian sunflowers. So, yeah, that's going to get really tall, hopefully. Hopefully, it can uh, withstand the winds we get here. You remember this bed? Maybe from the last video. I'm not sure if I did this actually. No, I didn't. <laughs> that was for Instagram. Okay, so this is a three sisters method bed. So basically we're growing corn, um, squash and beans all in this bed. And you probably and you probably notice we have two, <laughs> two
two watermelons there sugar baby watermelons that's just a trial we're just mixing it up and seeing which plants like to be around each other so uh yeah so far it's going really well um what what the beans is doing here is the beans takes the nitrogen from the air and transfers it to the soil feeding itself and the plants around it so the plants around the beans such as the squash here and the corn is really really thriving as you can see here this is a popping corn variety or you can use it for making flour this corn here say hello <laughs> this corn is called glass gem yes glass gem can you say glass gem can you say glass gem <laughs> this is a glass gem variety looking forward to harvesting those uh, so yeah that's that's what this three sisters method is I've never tried it before. I read about it, did the research, and I thought it made sense. Um, the squash is supposed to act as a weed suppressor. And you're probably wondering, why did we put the weed fabric here if it's supposed to act as a weed suppressor? Well, we do have that fight with bull thistles and we have little kids. Well, one is not walking yet, but this one is. And he likes to go exploring. So, yeah, we're trying to suppress the bull thistles as much as we can, and they're very invasive. And last year, we grew squash and they took over the squash. We didn't put any weed fabric and we didn't do the three sisters method, but I didn't want to take any chances. So, that's why the weed fabric is down. <laughs> yep, and I did that about going on three weeks now three weeks ago and i added this one just uh, at the end of last week the rest of the bed this is a mixture of different squashes winter squashes obviously we've got the watermelon there and we've got the french runner beans here called enorma so let's move on oh yes the tp is for the beans to grow up on because the corn is not big enough for the beans to grow up on the corn yet. We started the beans before the corn. So the beans is gonna take over the corn quicker. And yeah, that's why I've got my teepee here. Going back this way, it's starting to get a little windy now this bed we filled up a few days ago it took us all evening to fill this bed um, looking around for anything that we can find to help fill this bed and we got there in the end the soil is looking fanta fantastic we did top the so soil with um, some compost that we purchased from the shop because the compost that we collected from last season it just wasn't enough and it was full of bull thistle seeds and roots and yeah we didn't want it in there so we had to buy it but yeah <laughs> all the the food waste that we had is all at the bottom of this bed <laughs> so that helped filled we added some wood chips we added some stuff that we found around the property that will help that will help um, fill this bed and I think it's doing pretty well. We haven't added anything to the bed yet apart from this opal basil in the corner here. Um, I th I'm thinking to put some cauliflower in this bed. I've got about 24 cauliflowers waiting. I won't put it in there yet and I'm not sure if that's the final resting place or if I want to put it in the ground somewhere else, but we'll see. These are all watermelons waiting to be planted into the ground. 
sugar babies, um, honeydew melon. What else do we have here? We've got some melons, some other budgie, budgie melon, and I'm not sure what that one is. <laughs> but yeah, they're all melons. This bed was freshly made too. We've got some bolotti beans, bolotto or bolotti, bolotto beans here. It's a dwarf variety. Um, and below it, we have a bean, a green bean called campus, compass. Yeah. Um, that's also a dwarf bean and it's um, a really, really skinny, really fine bean. It's meant to be really, really delicious. Um, as you can see, we have our, one of our first beans here. Don't know if it's, uh, let's see, there we go. Our first bean. Lovely. Oh, and I decided to plant the random basil <laughs> in the corner there. Um, here we've got some okra okra over there over here and here something looks like it's taken a nibble out of that one um here we've got some soya beans trying out soya beans for the first time got some tomatoes waiting to be put into the ground again I've got my lavender from last season over here. Here is a fennel plant. It's a bronze variety. So that's why it's looking like this. It's meant to be that color. Here we've got lemon verbena. This was sent to me um, by a shop called urban plants i believe urban urban herbs sorry urban herbs in birmingham and they sent this to me for free and it smells so lovely doesn't it it smells lovely Ooh, do you want to smell that smell it wow <laughs> It smells lovely, guys. Exactly. Exactly like lemon. Can you say lemon? Lemon. <laughs> As you can see, we still have lots of plants in the greenhouse. Um, the peppers, I believe we're going to grow that in grow bags. And um, the loofah, I believe, will stay in here. There's no point moving this one. <laughs> it's uh, it's got it's gotten comfortable here where it is, and we're even starting to get some loofahs in here, just there, which is fantastic. What is this at the end? Hmm. I'm not sure what that is here. Can anyone tell me what that is? But yeah. Uh, praise God for progress, eh? We didn't get our loofahs this far last year. We started it way too late and then the frost came. Some cucumbers. These need to go in the ground, definitely. And some more some more beans that need to go in the ground needs a good watering as well some more melons this one's called mango mel it's supposed to taste like mango can you imagine a mango a melon tasting like mango so I thought that was quite interesting and we wanted to try it so here we are <laughs> um, this is a Another melon here. My lettuce. I believe it's almost on its way out. We're still harvesting pretty well from it. We've got loads. Loads more um, tomato plants. 
we have to find a a place for these grapes as well. Ooh, so much to do. So little time. Another fennel plant down below. And we've got uh, some eggplant or aubergine. Oh, I've just spotted our first flower. Look at that. Amazing. Can't wait. Oh no, wait. There's flowers in all of them. Even this one here. Another flower. Oh, praise God. <laughs> Guys, you know the struggle we had with aubergine last year. It got to flower and then an early frost came and yeah, I'm just so happy. Here we've got some sweet potatoes waiting to go into its final resting place. <sighs> yeah, we've got a lot of um, sweet potatoes here. We've got a purple variety, an orange one and the white one. So we're just trying to decide where to put this. If to put it in a raised bed or in the ground, we're thinking a raised bed because it'd be easier um, to get all the potatoes out rather than in the ground because last year we did a potato harvest not a sweet potato a potato and we have random potatoes popping up all over the place that we missed last year so uh, we're still harvesting potatoes so we didn't have to sow as many this year because of that my dahlias are finally in bloom looking at these just makes me so happy Wow. I do have the rest of the garden to show you all, but I believe my baby is now awake. So we'll continue this tour in another video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And we'll see you all in our next video. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.